Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Read One, Study One. So today, as you can see, i got an empty chair over there, so I'll be uh, doing this by myself today. And I want to continue our study in James. We are in James chapter 4. This is episode number 9. We're getting ever so closely to that elusive uh, episode number 10. This is episode number 9, and so uh, today we're going to do a warning against judging others. So this is James chapter 4. This is going to be verses 11 and 12, so just two verses. And it's a little short passage kind of right here in the middle of chapter 4. You know, we just got through uh, with Pastor David uh, last week. We got through talking about drawing close to God and some of some insight that David had, Pastor David had on that, and uh, it was incredible. I encourage you to go back and watch that episode. If you if you haven't seen that, then uh, go back and catch that episode. Great, great episode with Pastor David. So I want to continue here in uh, James chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. Uh, again, if uh, if you need to get a hold of us, you can reach us at read one study one at gmail.com. We'll answer those emails, get back to you with any questions. You can always drop your comments uh, below on YouTube, or uh, if you're watching this on Facebook, you can certainly comment on, comment on there. Spotify, I'm not sure how you comment on that, but anyway, you can catch us on several different platforms. We encourage you to go out and do that. But uh, uh, just reach out to us. Let us know if you have any comments or questions or, or uh, topics you want us to talk about, maybe uh, what we're going to talk about next after James. Uh, we're open for suggestions there. We're bouncing around some of the other New Testament letters, and so just let us know if you have one in mind that you think would be a good one. We'll try our best to, uh, to get to that and uh, do that. I want to remind you that as we talk about James, uh, this is a letter written by James, the half-brother of Jesus Christ, and so he was a Jewish pastor there in Jerusalem, and he was preaching and, and writing this letter, not preaching, but writing this letter to the Jewish people that had scattered out abroad. And so he was, he was trying to give them some instructions. Uh, again, James was a late believer that Jesus was the Messiah. He did not believe that Jesus was the true Messiah until after the resurrection. And so uh, once that resurrection was done, then he became more of a true believer, if you would, in Jesus Christ. And so, uh, so just keep that in mind as we read this perspective. So if you don't mind, let's go ahead and read together. We'll jump right in. Since I'm by myself, it's uh, kind of a little easier to just jump right in. So let's do that. Let's read these two verses together. Again, this title is Warning Against Judging Others. All right, here we go. James, I'm reading in the NLT version. James chapter 4, verse 11. Don't speak evil against each other, dear brothers and sisters. If you criticize and judge each other, then you are criticizing and judging God's law. Your job, but, it says, but your job is to obey the law, not to judge whether it applies to you. God alone, who gave the law, is the judge. He alone has the power to save or to destroy. So what right do you have to judge your neighbor? Oh, man, there we go. That's some powerful two little scriptures there. Let me uh, kind of just give you some insights on how I read this, and then uh, maybe we'll give you some practical application. And again, feel free to comment if you have a, a comment on this particular uh, section of passage here. It's a great passage, and so if you have uh, comments on that, please reach out to us. We'll be happy to hear your comments. But I think this is a, a very important scripture, even though it's only two right here in the middle of James. You know, we just got through talking about um, you know as you as you follow James, you know he's really big about faith without works, be a doer you know, show me by your actions. And then he, he he's real big on the law because, again, he came out of that background of, uh, of a Jewish pastor. So he understand, he understood the Jewish law. I mean, he was taught the Jewish law. He lived the Jewish law. That was what was practiced in the church. And so very familiar with that. And so as he became a believer in Jesus Christ after the resurrection, you know, the new, the new way, if you will, or the new uh, Christian movement going on at this time, and started following, you know, hearing Paul and Peter and John and all those other disciples. And then, you know, he started re he started writing this out of a new perspective, but still had that old stuff in his background. So it's very important to know that. You know, he starts right off and he says, you know, don't, don't speak evil against others. Uh, that is, I think, I think one of our biggest footholds, if I can dare say that, I think that's one of our biggest footholds in the church today is we want to criticize or to speak against other people. You know, we, we get to where we start interpret. I'm probably going to step on some toes here, so curl them up, but we get to where we see uh, stuff 
people are doing and we think, well, we're not doing that. So, you know, we're, we're better than them. You know, we might say that or, or, or the stuff we're doing is not as evil as what they're doing. So therefore we're better off than they are. Hey, I'm here to tell you, <laughs> I'm sorry to break this to you, but we are all sinners. We are all sinners except for the grace of God in our lives. And so whether you're out committing one of the, what you would call the, uh, the Oklahoma ultimate sins, you know, if you're out committing one of those or you're just out committing maybe the small Oklahoma sins, you know, those little white lies, everybody likes to say, well, it was just a white lie, you know, a little bitty lie. No, a lie is a lie. Uh, whether it's a big, bold lie or whether it's a little bitty white lie, a lie is a lie, and that is sin. No matter how big it is, it's sin. And so if if I'm over here casting, uh, blaming my neighbors, speaking evil against my neighbors because they committed some big lie, you know, maybe adultery in their marriage or or got out, went and got drunk one night or something like that. Boy, if I'm out here accusing them, you know, if I find out something, oh, man, they were, they're bouncing checks all over town. Oh, nobody writes checks anymore. They're, uh, they're you know, they're... They're going in the hole in their bank account, you know, every other week, you know, between paydays. If I'm out here speaking evil against my my neighbors and then yet I'm I'm doing the same thing by not being truthful sometimes or I'm exaggerating the truth, I'm just as guilty as they are. So what? I have no rights to be speaking evil against somebody when we are all sinners saved by the grace of God. If it wasn't for God, we are all in the same boat together because sin is sin no matter how you point it. It says right here, if you criticize and judge others, then you are criticizing and judging. Okay, let me, let me say that again. Let me make sure we hear that. If you criticize and judge others or each other, that's what it says, then you are criticizing and judging God's law. But your job is not to, it says, goes on to say it, it says it much better than I'm going to say it, but your job is not to judge the law. Your job is to obey the law. So I need to be more concerned about what I'm doing, what Travis is doing, than what my neighbor's doing. And I need to be more concerned about judging myself and how I'm acting and judging how I'm, I'm approaching the kingdom and approaching uh, my work, approaching my family, approaching people that live and breathe in the area that I, that I live and move in. I need to, instead of judging them, I need to be more concerned about judging myself and how I'm treating others. Am I treating others out of love and out of respect Am I, am I not looking at my brother who might not be as fortunate as I am? Am I looking down on my brother? Am I making judgments based on the way they look or the way they act? That's what I need to be concerned with, not what they're doing, but I need to be concerned with how I'm acting and how I'm treating others as opposed to what they're doing. Let's, uh, let's read some more. Let's get a little more positive here if we can. It goes on to say in verse 12 that God alone who gave the law is the judge. He alone has the power to save and destroy. So, what what right do we have? What right do I have? What right does Travis have to judge my neighbor? None. I'm going to answer this question. It's an understood. None. Zero. I have no rights to be judging my neighbors. I have no rights to be making assumptions on my neighbors. Uh, you know, uh, they... Neighbors get a new car. Oh, man, they must have went out and just borrowed or won the lottery. They've been gambling again. Yep, there you go. They got a new car because they've been gambling again. Or they're in debt. Boy, they just went out and borrowed the bank, you know. There's their kid's future. Their kids aren't going to go to college. What right do I have to make that judgment? No, my job, my position in the kingdom of God, is, and it's very clear here in James, my position in the kingdom of God is not to be a judge. My position in the kingdom of God is to be a blessing to be praying for my neighbors, to be lifting my neighbors up, to be trying to help my neighbors, to see what can be done to be a blessing to my neighbors, not to be out there cursing my neighbors or speaking evil against my neighbors. No, that's not my job. God alone is the one who wrote the law. God alone is the judge. God alone is the one that has the power to save and destroy. Not Travis, not Christians. We don't have that right as Christians to be the judge and jury. God did not put us on this earth to be the judge and jury. He put us on this earth to be a blessing, to be sharers of the kingdom of God, to be, to be, um, to go out and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are put on this earth to be disciples of Jesus Christ. Plain and simple. Not to be judges, to be disciples of Jesus Christ, to go out and spread the kingdom and to spread the blessing. Well, I hope you got something out of this. This was a great little episode for me. I kind of enjoyed doing this. I enjoyed doing this because I find myself here a lot. 
I find myself going towards that judgment point. And, and so after reading this scripture, I'm reminded not to go there. Travis, don't go there. Don't be judging others. No, I'm here to love them and honor them and respect them. You know, we, uh, we, I think we've made this uh, plain. Uh, I know we have at Life Changer Church. I hope churches all over the United States have made this plain. But God has two simple things. Love God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. Not to judge your neighbor. Love your neighbor as yourself. Hey, thanks for watching episode nine. I appreciate you watching. I, I want to pray for you as we go. Father, we just uh, pray a blessing over everyone watching this. I hope they get something out of this. I hope they uh, can the Holy Spirit can speak to them when they start to judge others, when they start to, to be in judgment. The Holy Spirit can remind them, no, we're not here to judge. We're here to love. We're here to be honoring, respectful, humble, as it said in the uh, last little passage of James. We're here to be humble, consistent, not judging others. So, Father, I just pray, I pray that you... As you watch this and listen to this, you take to heart this warning against judging others. Be a blessing, not a judge. Be a blessing. In Jesus' name, amen.